1776. The war for freedom, which had begun so gloriously at Lexington and Concord, has become a desperate struggle for survival. Washington's beleaguered army is reeling back from a defeat at Brooklyn Heights. And for the lonely patriots who have tried to aid him, retribution is swift and often terrible. Manhattan, 1776. General Washington's exhausted troops are licking the wounds of a half dozen defeats. Nothing but a miracle, it seems, can save the remnants of the tattered Continental Army. Halt! Who goes there? Captain Hale. Pass, Captain. You're gonna have to go on foot from here. But 1776 was a time of miracles. And for one unknown captain in Washington's army, it was a moment of destiny. Nate. Yeah. Hello. Captain James? Captain. What's this all about? Your guess is as good as ours. We were just told to report to Colonel Knowlton immediately. Another retreat? Uh, I don't think so. I don't know about your men, but mine haven't enough strength left to move. If Howe were to hit us today, we'd be finished. No, he won't. Another 48 hours, anyway. Why not? His troops are as tired as ours. Almost. I'm beginning to wonder if we'll ever be able to fight again. You're a pessimist, Captain. There's nothing wrong with this army that a victory wouldn't cure. And all we need for that victory is about 50,000 fresh troops and a way of blowing up the British Navy. <laughs> At ease, gentlemen. I brought you gentlemen here in a matter of the utmost urgency and secrecy. Nothing that's said in this room is to go beyond this room, is that clear? Yes, sir. Sir? Yesterday on a deserted beach in Long Island, our best agent was killed. I hardly need point out to you that even under the best of circumstances, this would have been a damaging blow. But now, with the army in retreat, and it's of the utmost importance we know when the British will mount a new attack, it could prove fatal. Are we giving up New York, sir? We may have to, yes. We're giving up our best seaport without a fight, sir. What would you have us do, Captain? Lose the city or fight for it and lose the entire army? Our only hope of eventual victory is to keep the army intact. I understand, sir. I think we all do, sir. Well, I hope so, gentlemen. Because before we can decide whether to run or fight, we must replace the man who was killed. We must get a competent military observer behind the British lines. General Washington has requested that an officer of this regiment volunteer for the assignment. Let me understand you clearly, Colonel. General Washington is asking one of the officers of this regiment to act as a spy. He didn't use the word spy. 
But he believes, as we all do, that we must find the British capability if we're to survive. Gentlemen, I know what you're thinking. Spying is an unpleasant business. It's a business that no gentleman or officer would ever consider under ordinary conditions. Well, these are not ordinary conditions. Before you refuse, I would ask you to consider the fact that one more defeat will finish us. It will mean the loss of the freedom we have all fought for so bitterly. I'm not fighting for some abstract freedom, Colonel. I'm fighting for the right to live as an honorable man. If I accepted this charge, I'd be betraying the very principles for which I fought. I understand, Captain. Freedom is to each man what he chooses to make it. Captain Hale. Captain James. I'm sorry, Colonel. I have three sons. If I'm to die in this war, they have a right to know that I did so honorably at the head of my troops. I'll tell the general there are no volunteers. Colonel? I'll go, sir. Nathan. You can't. Not even if it's the difference between victory and defeat? No one can know that for sure. Nathan, if you're caught, they'll hang you like a common thief. We all respect your position, Captain Hull. Hale has the right to make his own decision. Let me ask you something, Colonel. If the decision were put to you, would you go? I don't know. Forgive me, Colonel, but I think you do know. By a circuitous route, Nathan Hale is brought to a lonely cove on the shores of Long Island behind the British lines. He's unfamiliar with the territory in which he is about to move. He's totally inexperienced in the art of espionage. And he has been told that he has only a few brief days in which to get the information that may save the Continental Army. British patrols come by every few minutes. It's a fine beginning. I'll get rid of them, Captain. Don't forget, the blacksmith shop. sent me. Pierce? What happened? The British caught me. Wilson, the boy Pierce is dead. Dead? You're the only contact I have. Where can I go? Who can I talk to? Five miles down the road. People named Woodhaven. Woodhaven? They'll help.
You understand, Mrs. Woodhaven, that if this man shows up at your house, you're to report his presence immediately, on pain of death or imprisonment. I understand. be the one they're looking for. Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry you had to come just now. You see, my husband's away. He, he won't be back until tomorrow. Perhaps I could hide you in the root cellar until he gets back. Oh, thank you, ma'am, but I can't wait. I must get to Kipps Bay as quickly as possible. Kipps Bay? But that's on Manhattan Island. It's right where the British have been landing. Yes, I know, ma'am. Oh, I don't see how I could help you to get there. You see, my husband and I are already under suspicion. I really don't understand why you were sent to us at all. It was Wilson who sent me, ma'am. I'm afraid he had no choice. He's dead, ma'am. Then you're alone. Except for me. Yes, ma'am. Mrs. Woodhaven, you must know someone who can help me. Someone I can go to. Here. Take this. Mr. Wilson gave it to us when he first began to think this British suspected him. What can I do with this? Well, there's a tavern in Huntington called the Cedars. It's kept by the widow Chich. She's a patriot? I wouldn't think so. The tavern's always overrun with British troops. But if there's someone in the tavern who has the top to the box, you'll know he's one of us. Can you describe him to me? I'm afraid not. I've never seen him. You know his name? No, Mr. Wilson never told us. You might as well know the whole truth, young man. The blacksmith gave us this box seven months ago. We don't even know if the man who has the top to it is still alive. <laughs> Majesty King George. Did I detect a lack of enthusiasm in you, Samuel? His heart isn't in it tonight. Oh, why not? Three more prisoners escaped yesterday. Won't you ever learn to keep your mouth shut? And if he keeps up, the British will be convinced he's working for the rebels. Maybe he is. It's nothing to joke about. Men have been shot for less. If I were you, I'd stay out of Major Carlton's way for the next few days. Listen, Jenny, uh, you have some influence with the Major. Talk to him about me, will you? I'll make it worth your while. <laughs> I have enough problems of my own with the Major without taking on yours. But I will give you a piece of advice. What's that? If you don't want to meet the Major, you better get out of here. He was due more than half hour ago. You're not fooling me. I'm not fooling you. Well, now, so here you are, eh? I've been looking for you. Major, I'm doing the very best I can. I've doubled the security at the prison, but the place is bulging at the seams. I see. I've given orders for the building of a new compound. It will be ready in a week. Good, good. But if one more prisoner escapes between now and the time the new compound opens... I understand, Major. That will be all. Three more runs. And what's this? I'm beginning to feel neglected. And why not? You're late. Oh, are military matters, you know, my dear. <laughs> Your soldiers are in a happy mood tonight, Major. The victorious army is a happy army, madam. Well, then they're flush with victory, and I thought it was my aunt's rum that was doing it. She's a clever one, Major. Watch her carefully. 
That's the only thing I have been doing since she first came to visit you. Tell me, my dear, all the young ladies in Philadelphia as pretty as you are, hmm? All of them, except one, and we don't let her out on the streets. Oh. Uh, treat her gently, Major. Philadelphia girls are soft. Well, that's uh, <coughs> one of the things I like about them, hmm? <laughs> oh, Major. Uh, <laughs> you know, your aunt was right. You are a clever one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. You're quite welcome. May I have a rum, please? I was wondering if I uh, might find a room for the night. That depends. On what, madam? On who you are and where you're from. I'm a schoolmaster, and I'm fresh from Connecticut. Connecticut, eh? That's Yankee territory, isn't it? I'm well aware of that, sir. That's precisely why I'm here. Well, that's a fair answer, scholar. Tell me, what causes an erudite young man like yourself to run from the warm promise of liberty? Because, sir, the warm promise of liberty has suddenly become as cold as the waters of the Long Island Sound. <laughs> Tell me, what are the Yankees doing in Connecticut at the moment? Terrifying things, Major. Things that would make your blood run cold. Really, huh? Twice a week, the militia goes out into the field. Some have guns, some have brooms. And no two men are dressed in the same uniforms. Mark you, their faces are terrible to behold. Suddenly, someone shouts a command, and off they march! <laughs> <laughs> Trying to imitate His Majesty's troops. <laughs> I know not how you have the courage to face such a foe. <laughs> the day before I left, a British patrol fired two shots into the outskirts of town while the militia was drilling. The entire company turned ferociously and ran for their lives. <laughs> oh, excuse me, Major, I wonder if you might have a pinch of snuff. Uh, no, certainly. We colonials, uh, seem to have lost everything in this beastly war. Thank you. The top, I'm afraid, lies somewhere at the bottom of Long Island Sound. Uh, I suppose I should throw it away, but it was given to me by a very dear friend. Fine workmanship. Shouldn't be difficult to get a new top made for it. Well, I'd be delighted if you could find someone to put it right. Provided, of course, I'm here long enough to get it fixed. Oh, well, I, uh, I think you could find a room for me, madam. Certainly, Major. Two more rums. Your story was well told, Scholar. You know, I've seen the rebels run exactly like that at Brooklyn Heights. I envy you the experience, sir. I've saved up a little money, and I was hoping to get to Manhattan to buy a commission before it's too late. <laughs> Alas, my dear sir, I'm afraid that we're far too close to the end of this war to start training recruits, even as officers. We always have a need for strong backs, Major. By Jove, you know the girl's right. Our labor battalions are sorely undermanned. Labor battalion? Oh, does the prospect of honest toil distress you, Scholar? No, sir, no. I was uh, just looking for something a little more exciting. Uh, getting to the front line. I see. Well, I, uh, I think you'd best leave the excitement to His Majesty's troops. Uh, what is your name, incidentally? Francis Williams, sir. Francis Williams. Very well, I will have it entered into the rolls. You will report to Sergeant Gray tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock on the common. I see, sir. <clears throat> well... If I'm to be up before six, I'd best be getting to bed. <laughs> Your servant, sir. Yours. My compliments, madam. Your key. Thank you. Yes, I, uh, I think we'll make men out of these colonials yet. Spare another rum, if you don't mind, madam, please. say them now.
The Great Adventure will return after station identification. I don't understand. It's very simple. I'm going to kill you. You don't mind if I ask why? That performance downstairs couldn't fool a ten-year-old. I don't know what you're talking about, but if you pull that trigger, everyone in the tavern will hear it. That's right. And how are you going to justify the murder of an innocent traveler? The killing of spies is not considered murder. You're not even going to give me a chance to prove that you're wrong? All right, I'll give you a chance. Where did you get that snuff box? What do you know about the snuff box? I'll ask the questions. Where did you get it? An old woman gave it to me this morning. And how does it happen? I gave it to someone else eight months ago. I'm sorry, Scholar. It was a good try. You gave it to a man named Wilson. He was a blacksmith. Wilson gave it to a couple named Woodhaven when he thought the British were beginning to suspect him. Then why didn't you just come to me with it? Wilson never told the Woodhavens who his contact was. I presume he was trying to protect you. You'll never come this close again. Young lady, I've come this close a half a dozen times today. And I'm getting a little sick of it. I'm sorry. We're all on edge here. There's so few of us left. I gathered that when they chose me for this assignment. You mean you've never done this before? Wow, you've taken on quite a task, Mr. Hale. Nathan Hale. Captain, Norton's Rangers. Captain? Well, just what is it you've been sent here to find out? The exact number of house reinforcements. Why? We all know the British outnumber us three to one. Yes, but we also know that Howe's veterans are as tired as we are. We must know how many fresh troops he's brought in order to mount a new attack. The British are not stupid. They brought the Hessens ashore at night and bivouacked them all over the island so we couldn't check their numbers. There's another way. How? If I could find out how much ammunition and how many muskets have been landed at Kipps Bay, I could make a pretty good guess as to the strength of the reinforcements. Only... Only thanks to me, you're stuck in some labor battalion in Long Island. Is that what you were going to say? You couldn't have known. But I did know. Or at least I considered the possibility. See, if you were a British counter-spy, as I suspected, you could do us no harm in a labor battalion. But if you were one of us, and there was a good chance you could be, since you had the snuff box, then you're exactly where you ought to be. Why? Because tomorrow, all the labor battalions on Long Island will be moved to Kipps Bay to unload the British supplies. I've got a lot to learn. If you should need to contact me, the Bay, I'll be at the apothecary shop on Fallbrook Lane sometime after closing. You'll be in Manhattan? I'm supposed to do everything I can to help you. Well, how will you get there? Major Carlton has been very eager to take me someplace. I don't think Kipps Bay was what he had in mind, but uh, I imagine he can be persuaded. Well, good night, Captain. Sleep well.
What were you doing there? I, uh, lost my crowbar, sir. I was just looking for it. You're lying. You're not even one of my men. You're under arrest. Lieutenant uh, told me to clean up in here so we could go to work. Well, clean it up and don't just stand there. Come on, you others, help him. All right, the rest of you, get a move on. We're in this aisle next. Oh, I'll, I'll get that. Okay. I don't seem to remember your face. I, I, I took Jethro's place, sir. Jethro? The short, sandy-haired fellow. The lieutenant sent him home when he smashed his hand. Oh. Well, move on. All right, move on now. We've got to get out of this before morning. What do you do now? Go back to Colonel Knowlton? I don't know, I don't know. A failure is part of our business too, Nathan. You've done the best you can. No one can blame you if... There's only one place on this island where I can find out exactly how many troops have been landed. General Howe's headquarters. Who can get me there? No one can. What you're thinking about is suicide, not only for yourself, but for the rest of us. Jenny! I won't have any part of this. I'm sorry to be brutal, Captain. But your past performance doesn't justify the risk. Past performance? General Washington has to have this information within the next 36 hours or we lose the Continental Army. I'm the only one who can get it. Well, getting yourself killed and the rest of us along with you will not help General Washington. Jenny, listen to me. My life's not important anymore. Neither is yours. What's important is that we save the army if we can. Jenny, I have no love for this business. It sickens me. And it scares me. At least in a cavalry charge, you have the din of battle. The shouts of your men to help keep your courage up. Here you work in darkness and alone. And half the time you're sick with fear. Nathan. Jenny, I've discovered I'm not a brave man. But I've been sent here to do a job. And as long as I'm alive, I'm going to keep trying to do it. And you've got to help me. You've got to. Who can get me into house headquarters? I'm not sure. There's no time now to find out. You knew about this apothecary? You must know about someone else. Jenny, tell me. There are drivers who... who take the commissary wagons up to... the Beekman Mansion every day. One of them he, uh, used to work for the blacksmith, Wilson. I, I've heard he's a rebel sympathizer. But you don't know which one. No. I don't know which one.
Excuse me. I'm looking for a driver. I wonder if you could help me. Oh, we got lots of drivers. Which one do you want? One of the drivers who delivers supplies to Beekman Mansion. What do you want to see him about? I was told he wants to buy some horses. I have two I'd like to sell. It, uh, it's important. Decker's at a wedding about three miles down the road. Crawford lives on Canal Street. Winthrop uh, boards at a place about six miles from here. He, uh, he's probably on his way down here already. Well, I'll look up Decker. Thank you. For me? You're Mr. Decker? That's right. What do you want? Do you know a blacksmith by the name of Wilson? I never heard of him. Are you sure? I told you I don't know him. I don't know anybody named Wilson. I was under the impression that... Look, I don't know who you are, but you better get out of here. You better get out of here now. Come in. Mr. Crawford? What can I do for you? Amos Wilson sent me. Amos Wilson? Sit down. And, uh, why did he send you to me? He said you might be able to help me. The British strung Wilson up four days ago. If you're a friend of his, the British must be looking for you, too. I don't know what you're talking about. I, I came here to sell horses. Move over there and be quick about it. If my guess is right, there must be a pretty price on your head. Come on. I'm the driver you're looking for. It's gonna be a rough ride. You better make yourself comfortable. Tonight, Winthrop. All right, go on. Winthrop. Winthrop. Hey, Winthrop. Are you deaf? Yes, I didn't hear you. What's the matter? Plenty. I thought you said you was going to introduce me to a nice young girl, eh? <laughs> oh, that. Yes, that. Well, I tell you what, you, uh... You come down to the Green Lantern when you get off duty and I'll, uh... I'll see what I can do. Well, that's more like it. All right.
you remember the floor plan? I remember. General Washington could muster any more than a token resistance within the next few days, I should be very surprised indeed. In my opinion, a group of determined schoolboys could rock him at this moment. <laughs> According to my reports, his troops are exhausted, his ammunition is low, and he's almost without any food. It's getting late. The tavern will be filling up. 
I don't get through, Jenny, you must get this to General Washington. He'll get it. I promise you. Goodbye, Jenny. Godspeed, Nathan. made you and a man looks to me. I expect him to look hard. Jenny, I want to tell you that you're growing more beautiful every day. Oh, Major. Nathan! Nathan Hale! You must be mistaken, sir. How could I be mistaken about my own cousin? Major! You was the scholar. What's he doing here? Scholar. Major, this man is a captain of the Continental Army. Arrest him. You did a very thorough job, didn't you, Captain? Uh, would you mind telling me how you got in? Oh, forgive me. Would you, uh... No, thank you, sir. Just as you wish. Very good. Your cousin Samuel tells me that you are a graduate of Yale. Yes, sir. Uh, an educated man is a very rare thing in this continental army of yours. Perhaps you could tell me what you people hope to gain from this, um... It's uprising. There is some talk of a thing called freedom, sir. Freedom? A terribly relative word, isn't it, Captain? I mean, uh, as an educated man, you should know that no one has ever been able to define it accurately. Now, of course, if you were to talk to me about uh, grievances, there, I admit, you may have a point. If King George had been as open-minded as you, General, it would have saved all of us a great deal of trouble. <laughs> I can't dispute that, Captain. But we do recognize the justness of some of your complaints. And despite the vitriolic outbursts of a few hotheads like your um, Samuel Adams, we English aren't all thieves and scoundrels. When the revolt is over, the Crown will listen to your demands. But of course, not from those of you who have opposed us. Only from those who have remained loyal to George III. How considerate of His Majesty. The people I am talking about will be the new leaders in this colony. It is through them that these colonies will eventually gain the freedoms that you are so deeply concerned about. Join us, Nathan. Help us to build a new and better world here in these colonies. General Howe, I'm your prisoner because I've already chosen my side. I admire your loyalty, but don't push it to the point of foolhardiness. Washington is finished, Captain. The war will be over within a week. If you come over to us now, you will be of the utmost value in helping to rebuild this nation. I repeat, sir, I have chosen my side. Sergeant. Take the prisoner away. General, may I be represented by an American lawyer at my trial? Your trial? Captain, I am afraid you have just had your trial.
sir. They're a strange breed, these colonials. Parliament told me that I would crush them in six weeks. That was nearly a year ago. But, sir, you have beaten them, decisively. Why, every time you've met Washington, you... Every time I've met him, I have crushed him. I've crushed him again and again and again. But he's still alive. His army is like a phoenix rising from its own ashes. Major, can you give me any assurance that this schoolmaster captain that I have just... that I have just hanged will not also rise up to haunt me? Well, sir, I would say he was the least of our worries. Major Jerome Hardwick had never been more wrong. Through five more bloody years of war, the name of Nathan Hale was to echo and re-echo in the ears of British soldiers who were to die on American soil. His name became a rallying cry for colonial troops. And the words he is reputed to have spoken a moment before he died are part of the heritage of a nation of 200 million people. My only regret is that I have but one life to give for my country. Before previewing next week's great adventure, here is Gerald Goff, a teacher and a member of the National Education Association, with a postscript on tonight's story. Spy? The word has a distasteful ring to it. Intelligence. That word sounds more respectable, decidedly acceptable. Until our own century, armies marched into battle in precise formation. The art of war was pursued according to set rules. Spying did exist, but it was officially ignored and thought of as despicable and infamous. Nathan Hale, as you have just seen, was promptly rejected by his friends when he volunteered to spy to serve his country. Today we know that most governments are engaged officially and extensively in gathering intelligence. Nathan Hale had to act against the ethics and emotions of his time. He is remembered because he knew that a man must be guided by his own convictions and his own sense of duty, and not by the opinions of others. Here are a few scenes from our next episode of The Great Adventure. I got a bid of 15 on, I make a half 15, 50. I'm offered 15, 50. Do I hear 16? Do I hear 16? 16's the bid. I got a bid of 16 on, I make it a half. I got a bid of 16 on, I make it a half. I got a bid of 16 on, I make it a half. 16, 50. Thank you, sir. You been caught? Sent back? No, no. I've been living in Philadelphia for a year. Free woman. I come back to take you all north. On the Underground Railroad. Runaway? Runaway. Now, I've been free. I know what slavery is. Slavery is the next thing to hell. Joe! Oh, they're after me. They're right behind me. They're seeing me. Don't let them catch me. Help me. 